I happen to live in a huge liberal bubble because I was under the assumption that for a long time now the majority of Americans were pro-choice, meaning that they were in favor of women's reproductive rights. But it turns out that it hasn't been until now that kind of the majority of Americans are in favor of giving women the rights to choose what they do with their body if they get pregnant. Now a new analysis by Gallup indicates that uh, even though about 231 states have uh, passed abortion restrictions between 2011 and 2014, um, a huge number of Americans are now in favor of giving women the right to choose, about 50%, so about half, okay? 44% do not believe in uh, giving women the right to choose. They refer to themselves as pro-life, even though the vast majority of those people are not in favor of governmental programs that would help the poor when they get pregnant and have kids. Anyway, that's just my point uh, about that. Also, uh, the graph shows that uh, if you change the wording of the question, uh, apparently the stats change a little bit, okay? So the poll only gives two options, so Vox got involved, great publication, you guys should check it out. They did their own poll adding more options like both or neither. neither. So maybe you aren't in favor of either one of those things, which is an interesting question. They found that 39% identify with those options. Vox also found wording changes how people answer the question when asked abortion should be legal in almost all cases only 28% agreed. Um, more people support abortion rights when the poll language focuses on women. So another half were asked, uh, you know, women should have a legal right to safe and accessible abortion in almost all cases. 37% agreed to that. Now this is obviously a very controversial topic. I've talked about it ad nauseum on the show and it's something that I'm passionate about because I do believe in a woman's right to choose. But I'm curious to see what you ladies think about this. Uh, Dana, make your point. So, this is very interesting because um, I believe you know you should take um, responsibility for your actions. Mm -hmm. um, I do believe a woman should have their choice to do what they want with their body for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're like, for example, I come from a very like religious home, and you know I think about these problems like issues all the time, and I'm like, what do I what do I think? You know. Um, but if you're going to go with one side, go with that one side. Don't yeah. be flip-floppy with it. You know, be like, okay, I'm pro-life, you know, and go with it. Stand by what you're going for. So, like, I, man, I honestly don't even know where I stand on the issue mm -hmm. because I, you know, I come from a place that's very pro-life, but at the same time, when I think about it in that situation, I'd be like, what would I do? What would I do in that situation? Um, but, you know, honestly, I think you take responsibility for your actions. I mean, mm -hmm. You know, um, but I don't think any like any government should have any say over what I do with my body. Yeah. Okay. That's a good point. That's that's. What I, no. I, <laughs> I I agree with you on that, and I also agree with the the point of not allowing a particular religion to decide what you mm -hmm. do with your body. And I think one of the reasons why we have all these anti-abortion laws passing in red states is because Christian religion does have a huge impact on our laws, and I don't agree with that either. So, Maytha, what do you think about this? Make your point. If public opinion is changing from being pro-life to like people creeping into the pro-choice category, mm -hmm. why is it then that the discourse around reproductive justice is becoming more regressive, right? Like we hear about um, uh, conservative politicians trying to take the, the pill off of insurance plans, mm -hmm. right? And I think, I believe a woman, and I can't remember in what state, was convicted for murder yeah. in an abortion case recently. So, you know, people have theorized about why and what why this is the case and one thing which was really interesting that came up is that overwhelmingly more white women have abortions than non-white women and mm -hmm. there's also this fear of population growth within the quote unquote minority I don't like to call it minority community mm -hmm. but the non-white community and because again they can't afford these procedures and they they come from really traditional religious households most of the time they don't end up having those abortions. You know, I think that when you hear um, a lot of criticism toward the childless by choice people and all that other stuff, you realize like they, they want to repopulate a certain group of people to make sure that they remain in the majority. It's it's kind of crazy and sick, but mm. I think that has something to do with it. And I, of course, I think religion has a lot to do with it as well. Before we get to the personal question, I know we're going a little long with this topic. I just want to note um, that Scott Walker, a politician from Wisconsin, 
recently talked about uh, the ultrasound procedure that women have to do in some states before getting an abortion. It's all a way to kind of make the woman feel guilty. They have to mm. look at the ultrasound. In some cases, it's a vaginal probe that they're going to have to deal with. And you know what he said about it? He said something along the lines of, well, you know, people like technology. Or I can't tell you how many people can't wait to show me a picture of their ultrasound. Don't these people like technology? And oh, it just wow. shows you how disconnected he is from the reality. And a lot of times when women make these decisions, they're not doing it because it's a fun decision to make. Yeah. They're doing it because it's going to have a huge impact on their lives. And it's, it's a difficult decision to make. All right, so here's the question. What's one issue that you actually changed your mind on over time? Dana. Um, this is wildly different from what we were talking about, but um, mm -hmm. actually college education. Okay. Um, I, and again, this is just from my personal experience, but um, I went to a college uh, that I went to just, you know, that's what you do after high school. And I went because it was the cheapest option. It was um, close to my house so I could commute. Mm -hmm. And I'm still in debt. I know yeah. a lot of people. I had relate. my dad taught at this college. It was like five minutes from my house, and I'm uh, I commuted, and I'm still in debt. And to be honest, the education wasn't that great. Yeah. So why did I do four years of it? Like I I could have done it in like one year. Yes, I learned some things, but the amount of what I learned could have been done in one year. I did not need to go to like I totally support taking a gap year, mm -hmm. figuring out what you want to do because I know like now for what I want to do, like I didn't I didn't need it. Matha, what about you? God. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I, I was um, raised in a Muslim household, but I was really taught the faith in a very mechanical way. I, didn't, I wasn't exposed to like, the mystical spiritual tradition of Islam, which I think probably would have spoken to me, but my parents were also using that as a substitute for a rule system in the household. And mm -hmm. that happens a lot in immigrant households, that they use the, their own culture and say it's religion, because they think that that's um, fire insurance you'll buy into. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Hell. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, but, uh, but uh, for me, so I was always a questioning person. Like, why would I want to believe in a wrathful God, right? And what what was God saving me from um, in this life? And so there was a lot that I didn't understand because, like, the component, the the, the beauty of faith would, didn't speak to me. So I actually, you know, I know you've spoken about being atheist. Mm -hmm. I came out to my mom as atheist when I was in college, and <laughs> it was such a funny sort of scenario. And I said. Uh, Mom, what could I do that you would possibly never speak to me for the rest of my life? She's like, no, I can, I can never, never. Ever. And then I pushed her, pushed her, and she said, maybe have a, a baby and not be married. <laughs> and then I said, oh. um, what if I told you I didn't believe in God? So she just literally ignored me for a couple of years. But uh, no, no, not in, oh, oh, that, that, that I said that. that yeah, oh, yeah. Okay, no, like, no, no, yeah. no. My mom spoke to me like a couple hours later. She didn't. She didn't think that I was being sincere. Anyways, um, I did actually, when I moved to New York and I was trying to deal with like the, the adjustment of the move and also like I had um, some issues I was working out with my father, I ended up like rediscovering mm -hmm. like Islam through like Sufism and like yeah. the mystical tradition. And it was just like all these really interesting signs coming out. And you know, I'm kind of like a cliche person when it comes to some of these like spiritual healing sort of books and journeys like the alchemist really s spoke to me and then I, like i told you i did yoga and then that kind of like opened up a space within me that i had no idea about yeah. so now i'm definitely more of a believer but i have a different way of practicing all right fair enough oh. um i everyone changes and evolves and they'll change their mind on something and then they'll go back to it so it's totally perfect and normal um i would say over the years i've just become even more liberal so i used to be against prostitution now I'm in favor of legalizing and regulating it. I talk about that a lot. I used to be very much against it. I got mm. into debates with Jenk about it. I used to be against legalizing drugs. I'm obviously now very much in favor of legalizing it, not because I want to shoot up heroin, but because I want to ensure that people who get addicted get treatment as opposed to a prison sentence. And then finally, mm. um, gay rights. I used to be very conservative because I grew up going to church every Sunday. And after college, actually while I was in college, I was like, this is bullshit. I like rights for gay people. So, so I've changed my mind on a lot of political stances, and I'm sure I will again in the future. Anyway, guys, tell us what you think. What have you evolved on? I love learning about you guys, reading your comments. So do so in the section below, and we'll see you guys very, very soon.